everyone, I'm Mecca here, and on this week on Ask a Pro, I'm sitting down with the one and the only Tim Knox, and you are in for a treat. Tim, welcome to the channel. Hey man, Ask a Pro, are you sure I'm on the right show? <laughs> you are. I checked with Dale, and he assured me that you know what you're talking about. Good deal. <laughs> well, you know, if, if Dale referred me, I must know what I'm doing. You, you absolutely, absolutely, man. Hey, um, all right. So I'm excited to, to dive in uh, to this because we're, we're really going to talk a lot about ghostwriting. But before we get into that, who are you? You know, I'm just an old guy with really funny glasses. I look at myself and I go, why are you wearing those particular glasses? Uh, no, I am, uh, I am actually a retired entrepreneur. I had a, uh, a number of businesses over the years, but for the last 10 years or so, I have focused primarily on writing. I'm a fiction author. I've written nonfiction books. Uh, my bread and butter now is I have a company called Knox Publishing, which does ghost writing and editing and book packaging for uh, for other authors. Cool. So I also have a, a little YouTube channel where I dispense all kinds of you know wacky advice on how to write better. And uh, I do interviews with people such as yourself. You're going to be on my show yeah. coming up very soon. Cool. So Excellent. That's, me. that's awesome, man. And so, okay, so let's let's talk about what you, how did you get into to, to ghost writing? And yeah, how did you, how, let's start there. How did you get into ghost writing? Uh, you know, someone asked me if I could write a book for them. And I'm like, well, you know, I never really thought about that. Mm -hmm. I usually just write my own books. I've written 12, 13 books. Uh, but they had a story, but they didn't know how to write. Okay. And so uh, they asked me to write it for them. And that's, that's basically what ghost writing is. Hmm. You know, ghost writing simply means someone with a story to tell or someone with a story idea pays someone who can actually write and bring that idea to fruition and the ghost writer does so uh, without taking any credit without mm -hmm. putting their name on the book it's ghost written mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah that's how I, I started it. it was someone asked me to do that now uh, many years later I've ghost written close to 150 books I think really? 35 of them have gone to number one on Amazon wow. uh, so uh, yeah, that's, that's how I started. Someone said, hey, I've got a need, and can you fill it? And I said, well, what's it pay? And the rest is history. Wow. So 35 best-selling books that you get ghostwriting yourself personally. Now, so, okay, let's, let's talk about ghostwriting. First off, so you, you define ghostwriting as somebody has an idea, but they don't know how to write, so they'll hire somebody such as yourself. Um, to, to, to write the book for them. I think that makes that that's pretty clear to everybody. Now, w why, why write the book yourself and not publish it yourself? Why, why not just do all of it yourself and collect, I guess, a bigger paycheck potentially? What's, that's my first question, I'd say. Well, the, the thing you've got to understand about, about writing is if, if someone comes to me with an idea mm -hmm. without the ability to write, and then if I just take that on, I'm, I'm basically just providing a service. Okay. Now, I've written a lot of my own books. There's some of them back here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, writing and making money are two completely different things. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've done very well with my own books, but I have to not only write them, I have to edit them, I have to get the cover done, I have to do all the packaging, I have to do all of the marketing, I have to spend on this, I have to spend mm -hmm. on that. Uh, and that's what I will do if I'm writing my own book. Okay. But if you came to me a Mac and said, hey, I've got a great idea about this uh, young man from Canada who meets a girl at the Olympics and moves to Mexico and lives happily ever after. Sounds like a cool uh, story. I don't know how to write that story. Tim, can you help me? Mm -hmm. You would then pay me to write that story. So that's the best thing about ghostwriting is I get paid up front. It doesn't matter to me if the book sells one copy or a million copies. I'm going to get my money up front for the service I provide, and I'm, I'm very happy with that. Cool. But, you know, my own books, I, I will market those and I will take all the money from them. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like I said, it's, I really like getting that upfront paycheck. Yep. And because I am a writer, it's just kind of a natural thing for me to, to provide that service. So, uh, right. yeah, you know, basically what I'm doing is writing. So, that, everything else. That's, so that's the difference, right? So right there, because my, myself, I'm not a writer. Um, so trying to do like sitting, like you couldn't pay me 
enough money to sit down and try to write a book because <laughs> that would just, it, 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 like I wrote my own book that, that'll be coming out shortly, but that was a, like, I thought I was going to have that ready in September. It's no, November 16th. I'm months behind schedule. I can only imagine what it'd be like trying to write somebody else's book with somebody else's idea. But for you as a writer, that is your natural ability. That's something you love doing, you enjoy doing. For me, I, I prefer the marketing, the sales, the, the type of side of things. So it, it's whenever people ask me that question, I've, I know the, you know, I've known this, but it's because ghost writers just love to write. That's what they do. They don't necessarily love the sales side of things. They're doing what they love. Well, actually what it is is ghost writers like to get paid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I've, I've written a lot of books and I write a lot of, uh, across a lot of genres. Yeah. And I don't necessarily like every book that okay. I write. I wouldn't necessarily read every book that I write. Okay. But I cash every check. <laughs> and awesome. so, and, and that's the thing. And I am an old writer. I've, I've yeah. been able to write since I was, gosh, old enough to, to read and write. My mom yeah. has, uh, you know, I used to write my own comic books when I was a little kid. And my mom still has all of those in a box. So, writing to me is something that comes uh, very natural. It's not an easy thing to do. It's a skill like everything else. Right. But uh, yeah, I mean, from from a, an old writer's point of view, I would much rather write than market. You know, Makes I would sense. love to be able to just write my books and have someone like in Emeka uh, do all the marketing for me and send me money. Unfortunately, that's not the way it works in right. a lot of cases. And a, a lot of my, I coach a lot of authors who write their own books, and it's one of the the things that a lot of them have problems with is, mm -hmm. is the marketing side, because not not every author is a business person. And right. nowadays, if you're going to be a successful self publisher, you really do have to have that entrepreneurial spirit. You, you do, and that's that's so true. I, I remember that quote from I think uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Somebody asked him, you know, he's just like, "Hey, my book is so much better than yours, but why do you outsell me?" And he's like, "Because I'm a uh, what did he say? what did he, I'm a he best selling like author. I may not be the best writer in the world, but I am the best marketer." Right, exactly, and and that's exactly and that, for me that's a, that's how, always how I've viewed Kindle and publishing books. Um, you know, I, I use it as a platform to create income for myself. I don't use yeah. it as a platform to to write stories, um, you know, first and foremost. Yeah, and, and my clients, the people that I ghostwrite for, they're not writers. They are they're publishers or they are people who want to get into the Kindle publishing like you are. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're looking for someone uh, to, to just write the books for them, create the product that they can then take and sell and make money off of. Exactly. So if, exactly, basically the model that I teach my students and my self-publishing blueprint, but you are doing, I'm guessing mostly or a hundred percent all fiction writing, correct? Uh, for the most part, I yeah. probably do about 75% fiction and about 25% okay. nonfiction. Gotcha. Yeah. Hey, now let's talk about who uses ghostwriters because is it only us self-publishers and whatnot in the industry? Can you, can you, can you enlighten everybody on who, who uses ghostwriters in the real quote unquote real world? Yeah, it, it's kind of a mixed bag because there are folks like you who I consider you a publisher. Right. A publisher and a marketer, you don't write your own books. You have your books produced mm -hmm. as if they were a product for your company to sell. Yeah, totally. All right? So that is one client, and I have a lot of clients like that. Other clients uh, are, are people with a story to tell, uh, for example, a, a memoir. They've had a, a very interesting life that they want to write a book mm -hmm. about, but they're not a writer. So what I do in that process is I'll sit down, I interview them, I get to know them uh, fairly well, and then I write the book from their point of view. Wow. Uh, others, I have a, a, a formal publishing companies who uh, pay me to write books that they publish under various pen names. Um, my other side of my business is the editing side where I work with authors who have written books but need them uh, prettied up, if you will. They need a good editing, either a uh, just a very uh, minor copy editing or even a, 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 a total overhaul. I've taken mm -hmm. some books and just basically took the thread of an idea and the thread of the characters and, and created a new book out of them for the author. No. So there, there are many different kinds of folks that 
used ghostwriters, and again, they run from publishers to folks that want memoirs written to uh, other authors who don't think their books are good enough to sell. So, what about um, I got I got one one name, and I, I don't I don't want to say it say it because it's so controversial. But like celebrities and uh, things, people like that who come out with a book, like, um, I can't think of anybody, but you know what I mean? Can we yeah. talk about that? Yeah, well, here, here's the thing. I have actually had people uh, tell me that they <laughs> thought that ghostwriting was immoral or illegal. Right, uh, if yeah. If you were gonna put your name on a book, you should be the one to write that book. And, you know, the thing, the very first thing that I point out is the, the most well-known ghost-written book of all time is the Bible. Jesus didn't write the book. It's the word of Jesus written through, you know, all of these other folks. You know, yeah. you go into a bookstore or get on Amazon and you see books by Donald Trump or Jay-Z or Kim Kardashian or uh, Bill O'Reilly, anyone that yeah. you can think of who's truly famous, who is not a writer, yeah. they did not write those books. Right. You can always look on the cover and it'll have like Bill O'Reilly with so-and-so. Yeah. I guarantee you so-and-so is the one who actually wrote the book. Correct. And so you can call that ghostwriting, you can call that co-authoring, uh, but you know, m most of the books written by celebrities, Hillary Clinton, uh, I guarantee you she didn't uh, sit down and hack that book out herself. <laughs> no. Brazil, you know, right. what, what typically yeah. happens, uh, Emeka, is yeah, someone like a Hillary Clinton will yeah. sit down with a writer, they will be interviewed, that will be recorded, and then the book will be written in Hillary's voice, if yeah. you will, by the writer. Right. So ghostwriting is, as, again, it's as old as the Bible, and most nonfiction books written by celebrities uh, from Jack Welch on down, I would say they were either co-authored or ghostwritten entirely. So it is a very honorable profession, even though some folks think that if you didn't write the book, your name, you know, your name shouldn't be on it. That's just not how it works. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. It's just like some folks who think like self-published books aren't published books. I'm like, they still, yeah. br they still bring in a paycheck. A real right, they still bring in I a paycheck. To, yeah, I used to hear that all the time back in the, the old days before Amazon came around. Yeah. Uh, you know, the way that it worked is if you were an author, you tried to get an agent, you tried to get a publishing yeah. deal. And if you couldn't, you had the option of what they called a vanity press, which basically meant that you paid to have your book printed and then you would get out there and sell it out of the trunk of your car. Right. And so many people, well, well, you're not a real author. Well, let me tell you something. John Grisham self-published his first book, mm -hmm. sold it out of the trunk of his car. I would call him a, a real author. Right. So, yeah, it's kind of funny, the, the judgment of folks who can't write. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, you're so right. And that's just like, you know, that's like saying... Um, you know, um, you know, musician like um, what's the kid's name? Justin Bieber. I believe he was one of the guys who was first found on on, on YouTube, right, for yeah. doing covers of songs. That's like saying he's not a real musician because he didn't go through the normal way that musicians have been founded and all of it. He yeah. used the latest technology, and it's just, the world's adapting. The world's changing, right? Get with the times. Well, it really is, and and you have to understand that that. Again, there are different factions of publishing. There are authors mm -hmm. who write their own books and try to get them published and try to make a living. But then you have publishers who their product is a book. Right. And so they pay to have that product produced by, by a ghostwriter. And, you know, you go on Amazon, especially in the romance category, which is just huge. Yeah. You know, 98% of those romance books, I guarantee you, were written uh, by ghostwriters under pen names. Yeah. You know, you do have your, you've got your handful of, of actual romance writers, but a, a lot of them, man, they're just, you know, they're old farts like me sitting in Alabama hacking out books for, you know, seven to ten cents a word. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm sure we've we've cleared up exactly what ghostwriting is, who uses it, how popular it's become. Can we talk about well, what are the important things to look for when hiring ghostwriters? Um, and like really dive into that because I know like I, I have a background in sales and marketing. I ran a recruiting office, so I, I, I've interviewed and hired literally thousands of people. Um, 
finding, you know, for me, finding and interviewing people, piece of cake. But for so many people, it's a struggle and they get books they're not happy with or they drop off halfway through it. What can you, what can you do to help those people? The, the reason that typically helps or happens rather is because those people did not take the time to do their research, to, to vet the writer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, nine times out of 10, they'll, they'll ask their buddies in the Facebook forums or groups, you know, how do I get a ghost writer? Mm-hmm. And they'll say, well, you go to Upwork mm-hmm. and you can get books for a penny a word. And that's true. You can go to Upwork yep. and pay a penny a word and get some really crappy books written. Mm-hmm. So the key here is, uh, number one, have realistic expectations. Nobody worth a damn is going to write for a penny a word. Right. Very few will write for less than a nickel a word. Mm. Uh, the best ones, I, I charge upwards of 15 to 20 cents a word well. because I'm, I'm that good and I have the big glasses. Um, <laughs> but you have to go to Upwork and, and you've got to look at what's there. And again, Upwork is, I don't know if uh, you want to talk about this, but it's, it's basically a service bureau where someone looking to have a service performed like writing, yep. cover design, that sort of thing, can go and post a job. Right. And then service providers, writers, artists uh, can apply for those jobs. Yes. So typically what happens is someone will say, hey, I'm, I want to make money on Kindle. What do I do? And they'll have a buddy say, well, you go to Upwork and you get yourself a writer and you're going to pay a penny and blah, blah, blah. Well, the first uh, mistake they make is, number one, they're not clear in what they want. Right. You know, the the job description is very vague. I want someone to write a 25,000 word romance for me and I'm willing to pay a penny a word. That's, that's just too vague. The right. The writer doesn't have anything to go on. So that's the first mistake is they're too vague in their listing. The second thing is they 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 look at everyone who applies and they don't do their homework. Mm. You know, if someone is uh, wanting to ghost write a book for you, they should be able to provide you with samples of the work they've okay. already done. Uh, they should be able to provide, um, you know, references. I mean, basically, you're hiring them to do a job. Right. So you want to make sure that they're providing you with samples. You want to read the samples and make sure they're good and not crap, which most samples are. And, you know, if, if the sample is bad of Mecca, the writing is going to be a, is yeah. bad. Don't give them a chance yeah. to improve their writing on your nickel. Uh, the other thing that a lot of samples you'll see on Upwork were not written by the people that are actually doing the writing. You know, they've either borrowed someone else's samples or, you know, they've, they've paid someone to write the samples for them. And I've seen that a lot. I used to do what you do now. I used to be a publisher. And at one time, I probably had 30 ghostwriters working for me. Mm-hmm. And it was not unusual for me when I was looking for ghostwriters to find them using each other's work or even using my work as a sample. So wow. you've got to do your homework. You've got to read those samples. You've got to make sure that they are who they say they are. And then I'm a, I'm a big believer in giving them a test. You know, I'll tell you what. I'm going to pay you ten dollars to write me a hundred words. Let me. And here's here's the, uh, yeah. the topic. And so basically, you're going to give them a test just so they can prove that that they can write. Yeah. And if they can't, well, you've wasted ten dollars, but you've saved hundreds. The, that so, that has yeah, changed and, everything yeah. for me when hiring writers. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. Too many people just jump in, and then they'll hire somebody, and they won't give them guidance. You know, they'll say, "Well, just go go write me a, a paranormal romance." Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, I mean, I can take that topic and write a book about it, but a lot of people can't because they're not really writers. And that's the other thing that you have to be very careful of is most, I won't say most, but a number of folks on Upwork who are offering their services as a writer and ghostwriter. They're not a writer. They're not. They're not. They, they want to be, maybe, but they really don't have the talent to do it. So that's the biggest mistake, Emeka. They jump out there. They don't do their homework. They hire unqualified people. They don't give them any guidance, and then they're shocked when they get back a crappy book. Yes, that's, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. And I, you know, hey, I've made those mistakes where uh, I, I didn't give a writer proper guidance and, uh, you know, ended up getting a book I thought was good, but I overlooked it. And that book ended up, it made money, but it cost me thousands in what it could have actually made. 
um, you know, because it got hit with so many negative reviews. And uh, it, was, it was one of those hard lessons that you have to learn at times uh, so you don't make that same mistake over and over again. Let's talk about guidance, because you kept mentioning that over and over again, yeah. giving your writers proper guidance. Ooh, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, when, when you hire someone to write a book for you, again, let, let's say I'm looking for someone to write a paranormal romance, all right? So I found someone, I think they're gonna do a good job. Now it's my turn to give them what they need to write the story, and that can be anything as, uh, as uh, in depth as a chapter outline. It can be a character profile that details every character. Uh, it can be the entire plot, or it can just be, uh, you know, Bob is a bad boy biker who meets good girl Julie in a toy store where she's shopping with her only child. And although he's a bad boy, uh, her love changes him. Okay. Now that's a very high level description and that story could go any number of different directions. Okay. It's better if you give them a point by point uh, outline to go by. Give them something to write to because the sad truth the Mecca is a lot of the folks again that are are on Upwork, they're not really writers and they don't have the imaginative skill right. to take that paragraph and write a story. Um, so the more information you can give them, the more the guidance you can give them, the better job they're going to do for you. Does that make sense? So it requires, requires if I'm hearing you, hearing you correctly, a lot more work than most publishers are actually doing, right? A, a lot of publishers will actually hire a writer just to write the outlines and the plots that they then give to the other writers to write the book. Wow. And I, I've done that for a very long time. I did that with a company. I would, they, they actually paid me to write, um, I think it was 2,500 word overview and outline of a story. Mm -hmm. And then they would take that overview and they would have someone who would write it much cheaper than I would uh, take that and actually write the story. Wow. They had a lot of guidance to go by at that point. Wow. So yeah. that extra little investment, you know, you pay somebody more money up front to do the short outline and then you pay a cheaper writer who's going to have the proper information, who's going to be able to do a way better job. I love that. Can you give us, okay, so those are some great examples for fiction. Could you give us kind of an example for some, some nonfiction when you're looking for writers to do how-to books or whatever? Like what, what's the same same idea. It's kind of the same thing, but even if you're doing nonfiction, it's even more important that you give the writer some guidance, especially if they don't have a clue about your topic. Okay. You know, I see this all the time. You know, oh, let's see what's, um, I'm going to go to Amazon. I'm going to do some research. Let's see what's hot. Oh, essential oils are hot. Yeah. Or recipes are hot. So I'm going to go and I'm going to hire a writer to write on a topic that chances are that writer knows nothing about. Right. You know what I mean? Let's yeah. say, uh, that, that I do my research and I see that books on how to sell um, yellow roses are really doing well. So I decide, okay, I'm going to write a book on how to grow yellow roses. I go out and find an author. Well, unless that ghostwriter knows anything at all about growing yellow roses or has the ability to get on and do some pretty in-depth research, they're not really qualified to write a book for me. And so that's the biggest thing that I see with nonfiction authors is they'll think up a topic and they will just go hire any Jim Bob or Joe Bob to write the book and say, okay, uh, the topic is how to, how to grow yellow roses. Can you do some research and write a book about that? <laughs> and nine times out of 10, you know this, the book you get back is just crap yep. because they've gone to Google or they've gone to Wikipedia and they've done some research and they basically cut and pasted that research into a Word document mm -hmm. and tried to turn that into a book. And again, I'm, I'm using the word crap a lot, but it's it, a good it is. word for it, this topic. Well, it, it, it is what it is. I've uh, let me let me know your 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 thoughts on this. This was something I've I learned from um, way back last year when I started publishing my first books that really started taking off was the philosophy of picking writers who are passionate over profits. So when I'm looking for a writer, I look for writers 
who are one, they have a passion and a big interest in the specific niche that I'm going to write in or that I want them to write in because I want them to do it more as like, this is a fun hobby that they get paid for as well, because then they're going to have that knowledge. They don't have to do as much research, but the research they do will be so much better than finding a blah ebook writer who's just going to Google stuff and put together the book like you described. The quality of my books has skyrocketed. The, you know, this is how I get, you know, proper good reviews for the books. And of course, some things slip through my hands and like that book I explained earlier, but um, the, this is what I always try to tell my students. Find people, if you're going to do essential oils, Find somebody who loves essential oils, has a collection, uses them daily, is like an advocate for essential oils, and get them to write the book for you. If they can write. If they can write. If Just because someone is passionate about You're right. yellow yep. roses uh, does not mean that they can write a book about yellow roses. True. You know, Very the, true. The perfect uh, ghostwriter is someone who is passionate about the topic and can write well on the topic. Yes. You know, the, for example, going back to the, the fiction side of things, yep. the, the very best ghost writers of paranormal romance are those uh, writers that read a ton of paranormal romance. Right. So it's great having that, that body of knowledge being what we call a subject matter expert. Yeah. But you also have to have the ability to write. Now, you know, that you may get that subject matter expert to, to write a first draft for you. Mm -hmm. or, or proofread what you're getting the other person to read, or, or better yet, use them as the guidance for your writer. You know, have them, okay, let's say, I, I'm like, I want you to give me uh, your top 20 tips on how to grow yellow roses. You're an expert. I'm going to pay you 100 bucks. Just give me your top 20 tips. Then I could take those top 20 tips and get someone who can write to do some research and expand on that. I really so like that subject concept. subject matter expert is very important, but the ability to write a great book is, is even more important. I really like that concept. That's, yeah. yeah. I haven't heard too many people kind of explain that, but it, it makes... Because I just thought it up. <laughs> 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 it, it, it makes so much sense though, right? You yeah. know, it, it uh, yeah. Yeah. I, that that's that's really cool. I think that's like that's a huge golden nugget. That made the interview worth it right there, Tim. <laughs> there you go. Sure. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, all right. So as we wrap things up here, what? Um, so we've talked about exactly. So how to find the ghostwriters? How to work with them? Going to the expert first for an outline, then finding the proper writer. Um, do ghostwriters, what about elaborating or expanding a book as well? Is that something I, I, you'd want to use that same type of philosophy? So like if you start off, I guess this is probably more common with nonfiction. You start off with a smaller book, but then you add to it, you know, you create a couple different versions. Yeah, yeah you, you could certainly do that. Yeah, so what you would do in that case, Emeka, let's, mm -hmm. let's take our example of the... Uh, uh, 20 top tips for growing yellow roses. Okay. Well, let's say that uh, I come up with five or 10 more tips, or I come up with 20 tips for growing red roses. I might combine yellow roses and red roses into the same book and just say the top 20 tips for growing roses. Okay. Uh, same is true on the, the fiction side. Now, I've taken had people approach me that they've written a short story, five mm -hmm. to 10,000 words, and they want to expand that into an 80,000 word book. And that's, that's something that I've done quite a bit is taking the short story and writing it out to full. So I'm also a very big believer in repurposing content. You know, if you write a book on yellow roses and a book on red roses, what can you do uh, to, to make extra money with those? Well, you combine them into one book or maybe you do the ACX, you do an audio book. Yep. Uh, you know, maybe you turn those into a course. How can you take all that knowledge that you've written in that little book and expand that into uh, various streams of income? I know you're really, really big on multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. uh, repackaging and repurposing content like that is one of the best things you can do. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, hey, the last uh, little bit, can you explain what your company um, does for anyone who might want to reach out to your services? Sure. Uh, the, it's, the formal name is, is Knox Publishing. 
Uh, basically, it's just Tim will do anything for a buck. That's the informal. Uh, no, what I do is uh, primarily is uh, professional ghost writing, uh, professional editing. I also do what's called book doctoring. People will send me their novel and ask me to make it better for them, so I'll do that. I also do copy editing. Uh, also do personal coaching one on one with authors who are are trying to get a book written. Uh, I can also help with query letters when it comes to agents and that sort of thing. So cool. anything an author really needs from just a copy edit to coaching through the, the entire process, we'll actually do, uh, if you come to me and say, hey, I've got an idea on a book with uh, about uh, how to grow yellow roses, I can actually get the book produced, written, the cover, packaged, put it up for you, everything soup to nuts. So it's kind of a, we can do a little of this or we can do a whole lot of that. And we work wow. with authors, we work with publishers, uh, really a whole variety of clients. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Well, I'll make sure I'll put all your links in the description there right. so people can find out more about you. And I know you do have a great YouTube channel. I've watched some of your interviews on there, and uh, uh, I, I think a lot of my people enjoy enjoy watching them with your personality. Well, good. Yeah, it's uh, the, the channel is called How to Become a Better Writer, mm -hmm. and it's really about the nuts and bolts of actually writing and producing your own book. Uh, but I also do a series of interviews. Uh, like I said, you're going to be on my show. Mm -hmm. uh, just got through with uh, Chris Fox, who's like one of the top selling uh, sci-fi guys. A whole variety. We had romance authors on. So uh, yeah, what, what I try to do is just produce content that will help people become better writers and hopefully make a little bit of money along the way. Well, love it, man. You keep doing what you're doing because you're making the publishing world a better place. So definitely, definitely appreciate it, Tim. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for spending some time with us. And uh, until next time, everyone, we'll speak to you soon.